Hi, Gittimer Certified Advisor, Mitch Taylor. And Certified Personality Trainer, Vicki Musney. And today on Creating Connections episode number 79, we get a chance to speak with a fellow Gittimer Certified Advisor and a great sales coach, Jeff Bajorek. And we're going to talk about specifically why is it that you don't want to sign up to be a salesperson? <laughs> <laughs> And it's just fun to get another salesperson's perspective that's uh, got a little bit different view, not someone not in our industry, and see how what we, what we can learn from someone on the outside. Jeff has some great insights on when he was a buyer of all things weddings. Yeah. More after the break. That was nice and easy. What are you talking about? This <laughs> also speaks to a much bigger issue. Providing personal solutions through understanding people. This is the Creating Connections Podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. Welcome back to Creating Connections episode number 79. I am Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor. And I'm Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. And today we get the pleasure of speaking with a friend of mine I got to meet in Charlotte. I had to go all the way to Charlotte to meet fellow Michigander and fellow Gittimer Certified Advisor, Jeff Bajorek. Jeff, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Vicki. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here with us. My pleasure. I mean, it's not often that I get invited to do a podcast with people on opposite ends of the country in different time zones. <laughs> and everything. It's, it's, uh, this is cool. It's a cool experience. Thanks for having Good. me. We're glad you're here. So Jeff and I connected in Charlotte and had a great experience together through that uh, training with, with Jeffrey Gittimer. And what was funny is one of the statements you said, Jeff, was the fact that people don't grow up wanting to be in sales. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I speak to rooms, you're in front of rooms constantly, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in some capacities, you know, depending on the room, depends on what you're doing, but you're sure. in, in front of crowded rooms all the time. And um, anytime I get an opportunity to ask an audience, who here, of all these salespeople in the room, who here grew up wanting to be in sales? Raise your hand. And there is always one guy, but it's only one guy. Who said, oh, or yeah. sometimes one girl. There's always like that one Girl Scout who sold so many cookies that she thought she could make a career out of that. You're There's right. One yes. No, you're right, Vicky. That's a good point because, and, and actually, that's that's really good. Um, and Vicky's wearing her uniform right now. Oh. <laughs> so, <yes. clears throat> I have I have a Maybe I've that's gone why on, I love green. <laughs> I've gone on rants before about Girl Scout cookies and, um, you know, how all the parents end up selling the Girl Scout cookies instead of the Girl Scouts. I think yes. it defeats the purpose, but it, it, that's a, that's another podcast probably in, entirely. Um, My but, kids are selling cookie dough. So you want to make cookie dough, you know, just feel free to contact me after the show. <laughs> Do I look like a guy who likes cookie dough? Don't answer that. <laughs> but I'm, kidding, we, I'm not shipping cookie dough to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we've done the cookie dough sales yeah. for the, the schools and things like that. Um, I just give them money and I say, here you go. This will go. Right. You need the money more than I need the cookies. Do yeah. something nice for Amen. someone. Amen. And then we get out. But um, okay. oh, I, it, we, no, we, but, it, but your, your point was that there's very few people that grew up saying, when I grow up, I want to be in sales. Right. Yet, give me someone, give me anybody who's not in sales. Tell me anybody who works for a living, even if you – punch a clock and pull a lever on an assembly line somewhere, you sell your time for a living. We all sell things, whether you're selling your time or whether you're asking for the keys to the car on a Friday night because you got a date or, you know, if your six month old baby is just hungry or tired or uncomfortable for whatever reason, we are born to sell, period. And I think that there are too many professions who don't get paid by commission or don't feel like they want to identify with that archetype, I think I call it, of the, yeah. the greasy haired, slimy, I used car guy right on the corner lot that you try to distance yourself from selling as much as possible. And I think when you do that in any profession, and, um, you know, to, with the, um, the entertainment profession and, and picking the crowd and creating an experience that is selling, that is sales from beginning to end. And I think if there are professionals like that out there who are trying to get around the idea that they're in sales, they're going to be they're, Well, they're, they're sadly mistaken. Well, yes. Another thing we've noticed, and we've talked about this before, is that so many people in the event world get into their business, not because they wanted to do the business side, 
but because they like a particular niche, they want to play music, they want to make cakes, they want to do flowers, they want to plan events, you know, they like photography or video, whatever it is, but they don't realize that they have to learn the business side and that it's learning the sales piece mm -hmm. that keeps things moving forward. Well, sales is about creating connections, developing relationships, like earning trust. I, I, I put that in there for you, Vicki. Oh, thanks. Um, and, and then utilizing that rapport and that connection to be able to transfer some sort of value and enthusiasm. That's what sales comes down to. And when you think about it that way, and that's what really turned the light on for me was it's been several years now, but I heard it on a book on tape. A sale is nothing more. And it was a book on tape, by the way. That's how long ago it was. That the, you know, a sale is nothing more than a transfer of enthusiasm from one per person or party to another. And more often than not, it doesn't even, and it, it doesn't even involve money. So when you're in events, I'll tell you what, I got married a little over nine years ago, best day of my life to this day. And all of the things that went into that, the things that went well, the things that didn't, the things that were in between, that all added up to that day. And I'm still very enthusiastic about that day. Mm -hmm. and it was our anniversary recently. And we were looking back at some photos and some of the things we, we were reminded of. We were actually reminded sure. that our pictures didn't actually turn out the way we wanted them to. But I forgot we even had pictures because everything else went so well. So that enthusiasm gets transferred by anybody who has their fingerprints on that event in any way, shape or form. I love the enthusiasm side. And what I've tried to drill home to a lot of uh, event professionals that I speak and talk with is the fact they get all hung up on, you know, the, the dollar amount and all hung up on, you know, well, uh, I don't know. And I, should I ask for the business or I ask for the media, you know, the sale or not. And, I'm like, listen, just help them. Right. That's all sales is to me. And, and I love yeah. the transfer enthusiasm too. Absolutely. That's crucial. Mm -hmm. But helping someone get what they want, that's all you're doing. Right. I, it, it doesn't matter what it's industry or trade, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so mm -hmm. I love that with what you said about, you know, that we're not, we don't grow up trying to get in sales. You right. Know? No one, you know, career day is not, you know, I'm going to be a salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write that down because I, um, my kids are in kindergarten and in the second grade and I, I see some career days in my future and I'm going to have to make sure that uh, I, I volunteer. <laughs> They're fun. I've done the middle school career day the last three or four years. <laughs> so why is it, do you think, Jeff, that people don't consider themselves a salesperson? I think because where we're at right now, um, the roles that salespeople play now are different than they were. I think that's a good thing, but um, you don't have to look very hard on the internet to find an article. I've even written a couple that um, talk about how the way people buy has changed. So the way people need to sell has changed mm -hmm. and we've grown up in the media. We've grown up in movies on the radio with the experiences that our parents have had, our grandparents, everybody with this idea of what a salesman is. And most people, at least now, and it's not even generationally, I think that most people don't like being told what they need to, to do. They don't like being mm -hmm. limited on their options. They don't, yes. like to, they don't like this idea that someone knows more than them. And if they only knew more, they could get a better deal. Right. And, and I've, I've had, the, I had a discussion with someone recently who just um, is, is selling their house and I'm like, wow, I just, I looked at closing costs and then I've got to buy this. And I didn't know any of this stuff was out here. It feels like I got punched in the face. Nobody likes getting, well, few people like getting punched in the face. Right. <laughs> and especially by something like that, that's costly that you didn't plan for that. You, you know, I mean, it's, it's unpleasant. Well, now we all carry, all of the information that's available in the world right now in our pockets. If you've got a smartphone with access to the internet, you can get a hold of just about any information you want. And now there are apps that you just pull that same phone out, scan the barcode at the store that you're in, and they'll tell you if it's cheaper somewhere else, where it's cheaper, and you can even, you can go shopping in one store, but buy from another store and have it arrive at your home before you do. So we've got all of this information here. And I think that information changes. So making my point though, in, in the meantime of that, you can't sell the same way under new circumstances and that dissonance, it makes people uncomfortable. So we've got to change the way we think about what selling is. And, and, and I think what you said there with red laser, 
you know, Red Laser is, I believe, the app you're talking about, or one of the apps anyway. There's, there's a bunch of them, yeah. 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 You could just click, the, you know, click the thing, scan the barcode, boom. And I've done that. Mm-hmm. And absolutely, you're right. The way we buy has changed. So the way we sell has to change. Yeah. So if you're an event professional, they're not necessarily scanning the barcode, not yet anyway, <laughs> of, of what you're selling for, for flowers or video or whatever the case may be, but they're definitely calling competitors. So how do you differentiate yourself in the sales world? What would you, what would you suggest to someone as an event professional, they're selling entertainment or they're selling, you know, um, cake or whatever the case may be. How can they differentiate yourself if down the street is going to charge, you know, two fifty a slice, and you're going to charge three fifty a slice. Well, you have to know how you're different. I mean, the the root of differentiate is different, right? And you got to think about that. I mean, ev- most everybody anymore with the internet and and whatever music service that you want to use has access to most of the same music yes right? it used Amen. to be now i've helped people dj before and we'd have milk crates full of cds and cassette tapes and, and all these other things you had to lug around with you and the person with the biggest catalog had an advantage well now everybody's got the same catalog everybody's got reasonably good equipment everybody's got you know so but it, it what it comes down to is the experience that you create and how are you able to create an experience? And are you, pardon the pun, able to tailor that experience to the <laughs> audience? You're, you're hitting all of them today. Great job. You like that? Yeah, there awesome. Is, uh, almost that like you pre- it's almost like you prepared. <laughs> so, but um, the idea is that you, you've, you've got to get a feel. Anybody can press play. You know, my brother got married six, seven years ago, and he said, I'm having a band because I don't want some – you know, some idiot with an iPod and two big speakers to stand back there and just play on his iPod for four hours. I feel like I'm getting ripped off, right? So if, if all the music and all the equipment is relatively standardized, then the experience you create, your personality, you know, your sense of humor, you, you've got to work on building a relationship quickly with that couple that's getting married or uh, w- whatever the event is that you're working yeah. with. I mean, primarily weddings more than anything else, but you know, what kind of an experience are you going to create and, and how do you, is it a light show? Is it a photo booth? Is it that you have connections with other people and your ability to work well with other professionals and wedding coordinators or whatever? Like you get recommended by so many people because you're just so easy to work with. I mean, there's a value to that. Mm -hmm. Plan your own wedding. I think, um, I don't know the data. You guys know better than I do. But, you know, my wife and I paid for our own wedding. You know, we had a little bit of help, but it wasn't like her dad was going to pay for it. So we got rid of all this control to them and they made decisions. We were very, very choosy about who we decided to hire. And it's a benefit when you, I'd never done it before. Right. Who can help me? Oh, you know, I know this person, he's great. Or I know, you know, this company over here, they do flowers. They're kind of below the radar. They don't advertise like the rest, but they're going to give you great flowers. People are always thrilled and they know that you need to be price conscious. So we'll go with this, you know, or whatever it is. So understanding what that couple is looking for, understanding what the group that you're entertaining is looking for. And if you're able to tease those motives out, if you're able to to, um, just ask good questions and engage people, you'll understand how to put on a better show, which is going to get the rave reviews, which is going to, you know, cause people to walk on the way out. I need that guy's card. I need her, her business information. I want to like that business on Facebook or connect with them on LinkedIn or whatever it is. Cause they're just, yeah, they, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. And it's more than just playing music from an iPod or a digital player of some sort. And, um, you know, understanding that difference, I think it will help. And a, a great quote from a, a sales friend and mentor of mine, uh, George Lopez. He runs a major company out of uh, Valencia, California, that Vicky and I just toured. Yep. Uh, his quote was, sell when you perform and perform when you sell. Hmm. And I think that is a, a great quote, a very true quote. Yeah. Because you're, when you're on stage as a talent or you're delivering your service as a florist and that presentation is there on the tables, that's your performance. Mm-hmm. Right. And that needs to sell. That needs to sell you as a company that these are the most beautiful, exquisite flowers I've ever experienced at an event. The aroma, you know, everything uh, there speaks to something to people with all five of their senses. 
Well, one of the things, you know, when I think back, going back a long time, the, the cake that we got, yeah. why did we choose the cake provider? Um, they were reasonably priced. That was one thing because you get sticker shock when you think of cake. You know, you start thinking like four or $5 a slice. I'm like, how good could cake be? Do we need a cake? Like, you know, I mean, you, you, I mean, it, it, get, it can be ridiculous. And I'm not saying yeah. that it's not worth it. It just may not be worth it to me, right? But right. we went in there and they were very real. They were like, come on by. We have free tastings every Tuesday. And we have a couple of different flavors. We're not going to make you a cake just so you can taste it. But if you want to come right. by and you live in the area, come by. And then we just started talking a little bit. And, you know, there's the tradition. You're supposed to take some wedding cakes, supposed to put it in your freezer, yeah. and you're supposed to eat it a year later or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. this was one of this was the biggest selling point for them when it came to me as they said don't do that so why they said your cake is going to taste terrible we will make you a small cake that is the same flavor as your yeah. as your wedding cake and it's on us complimentary for your first anniversary eat That's cake that tastes as good as it did the first day like they didn't take themselves so seriously that they were unrealistic and trying to justify everything they were like you know what? It's going to taste like garbage. Your wedding day is supposed to be the best day of your life. Let's make you a fresh cake. You deserve that. I was like, that's real. That was a real, real. Well, person, and real it's person. brilliant. And it's their commitment to wanting to build a relationship and keep yeah. that relationship after the day. Yeah. And, and they differentiated. Perfect them. example. And they differentiated themselves. That's yeah. a big thing. And it was really cake. It was really, really delicious cake. I mean, it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was a little understated. Um, and, and we wanted it that way. It was exactly what we wanted. Sure. It was wonderful. But it, it was just, I think authenticity is a bigger piece of, of business. And Amen. Sales, more so than it's ever been because everybody can fact check you from their pockets, right? And the biggest concern with the traditional salesperson you know, that we all think of in our heads, just do a Google image search for salesmen and see what comes up, right? <laughs> the, the, the common theme there is a lack of authenticity, a blatant lack of authenticity. And trust is the most important currency and the most undervalued currency in the world. And if you don't have that, it's really hard to buy from anybody. Yeah. And Jeff, you just kind of said something really quick in passing, but I think it was really important when you were just starting to tell your cake story and you said something about, well, I'm not saying that cake can't be worth four or $5 a slice. It's just not worth it to me. Right. And I think that's really huge because that's something that we all deal with in the industry is that every niche in this industry is someone's top priority. Yeah. Everybody is a high end client in at least one area, Yes. but they're different. And we, that's, where what you talked about before, the asking questions and, you know, getting to the heart of what that individual client wants is so important because somebody is going to want the $5 a slice cake. That is going to be their top priority. Sure. And, and it wasn't yours and that's okay. And, and it looked like your, you know, cake company that you went with, they found a way to meet your need, you know, and figure out what was important to you was you wanted something simple that tasted good and you wanted someone that got you as people and was willing to build a relationship and say, come back and see us next year. That was what worked for you. And I just thought the way you said that was just kind of stuck in there, but it was, it stood out to me. Well, th and thanks. I mean, I, I, I think that it's something that I tend to take for granted sometimes because, and, and anytime you sell or you make a, a sales call or you have a conversation and you, you make the offer and you think they're going to take it and they don't, mm -hmm. it's really easy to feel bad about that. It's really easy to feel sorry about that. And it's really easy to try to avoid that. And then you end up discounting and undervaluing yourself because you just feel like you need to be validated that what you have is worth paying for, even if it's not what you originally asked for, um, you know, monetarily. But understanding too that, hey, may, and, and this place had $5 a slice cakes. We just, they didn't try to, they didn't really offer those to us because we said, well, we're looking in this range. We don't right. want to spend that kind of money. And so they had something for us. Yep. And, so, and they had something for us that was still worthwhile for them to produce. And we got something that was worth, you know, mm -hmm. utilizing. And, and yep. there's a, a fine line sometimes between having so many options and, and um, just not having a target market at all. Sure. But you sure he doesn't work in our industry? <laughs> <laughs> understanding what it is that, 
your clients and potential clients need mm -hmm. and being able to walk away if what they're looking for is not what you offer yeah. and and being able to just brush that off your shoulder and, and move on um, with your head held high because there's someone out there you know and, and yeah, the other yeah. thing that people so many people don't think about or don't ask is okay why didn't they buy was yeah. it that I was just trying to sell a Lexus to someone who's trying to buy a Chevrolet or did I just not justify why, what it was about my DJ services, what it was about my floral arrangements or what it was about the experience that I could create was just, I, I wasn't able to establish enough value in that service to them to justify that price tag. And there's a lot of different reasons and that post-mortem, so to speak, is right. so hard to do, but it's the best thing you can ever do. You, it, it's, it's crucial to do that. If you don't understand the why behind why they don't buy, then <laughs> I have to laugh. To be spinning your wheels big time in business. Mm -hmm. I have to laugh, um, and I'll tell you why afterward. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We are going to have to wrap up. We got to wrap. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you just quick tell everyone a little bit about your business, how they can reach you, what it is that you do, how you can help our viewers. Um, I have a sales training and coaching business. Um, I'm based in the Detroit area, but I'm doing things. I, I work with companies. I work with medium and small sized uh, businesses with sales teams um, to really dig into them understanding why they do what they do and perhaps why what they're doing isn't working anymore. Okay. Um, I also work with people on an individual basis. I'm rolling on a program right now utilizing um, some online learning resources and tying that together with regular uh, webinars and conference calls to be able to personalize that kind of material to make it more effective. Um, I am on LinkedIn. You can find me at LinkedIn at Jeff Bajoric. I'm on Twitter at Jeff Bajoric. My website is called parabolasales.com. My company's called Parabola Consulting. The website is P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A-S-A-L-E-S.com. Going all the way back to high school geometry. Um, okay. I like math and a parabola is a graphical representation of exponential growth. And that's what I provide the companies. Um, the okay. reason I had to laugh, Mitch, is because I'm also starting a podcast this fall. It's called The Why and the Buy. So you didn't even know that, but you taped it up right there. Awesome. It's just magical. So there will be details. Fun. Details about that will be on my website um, uh, very soon. And the, the web page for thewhyandthebuy.com will be up soon as well. Awesome. Cool. Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you so much Thanks. for being on the podcast today. We greatly appreciate it. Oh, yeah, this was fun. Thank you to the, to the, the both of you for having me. This was, this was great. Awesome. To learn more about Jeff, again, go to parabolasales.com. To visit us on the web, you can go to our home, creatingconnections.biz. You can find us upcoming at Mobile Beat Las Vegas. Uh, I'll be providing a presentation on Wednesday and a sales mentor to both Jeff and myself. Jeffrey Gittimer will be speaking as the keynote for Mobile Beat Las Vegas coming up. Uh, please go get your tickets at mobilebeatlasvegas.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. For more information on providing personal solutions through understanding people better, visit creatingconnections.biz.